What is up YouTube? Welcome back to Stocks by the Numbers. Today I wanted to do another quick installment of my series of How'd I Do? Let's Review, where we actually go back, hold my feet to the fire, and see if I have any idea of what I'm talking about, or if we made a mistake and we need to recheck our patterns, recheck our numbers moving forward. However, on this one, I think we got it correct overall, but we're going to take a look at it. So name of the company I'm going back and reviewing here is Dasky. Ticker symbol DSKE listed here on the NASDAQ. Now, this stock right now, 809 a share, down about 15 cents, roughly 2% here on the day. So, this company, again, trucking, transportation, right here, this big green candle is right about where I did the video, right here, November 14th. As we see here, coming off this earnings report, uh, estimates went up, as I spoke about. Revenue came in slightly light. However, I said that me personally, I wouldn't view that as too much of a red flag. Uh, the stock was still undervalued there, uh, in my opinion. Again, stock was uh, 655, I believe, when I made the video. And uh, as we see, we had a little jump up here to the low sevens, and then the stock immediately kind of started to pull back to about this 540 level. Now, when we looked at stock charts last time for the company, I noted the 200-day moving average was showing some pretty decent support for the stock, and I believe that was at about 580. So as the stock started to pull back a little bit, obviously that would have shifted, the moving average would have began to shift down just a few cents. Uh, however, I did say at 580 I would be a buyer, and if you recall, the insiders purchased, I think it was uh, roughly 18 million shares at uh, about $6 was their cost basis. So that's why first reviewing the video at 655, um, I felt it was a buy, the numbers look good, everything looked good. And then I said, obviously if it pulls back and you can get in at sub six, that would be a phenomenal entry. And as we see here, drops down to under five and a half. So anyone who stepped in even at six and a half or down at six when it pulled back or sub six, congratulations, obviously you're up, uh, you know, at least 20 to 30% here. And as we see here, it bounced off of these lows here, roughly 540, and then rallied all the way up to about nine and a half here, had a nice rally going into this earnings report. And then as we see here, the company beat very nicely on the profitability sign and came in 11 million over revenue estimates there. And the stock again, ran up to 956, had a nice pullback back to that about six and a half level and has since just been slowly channeling upward, sitting here north of $8 a share. So overall, um, again, in the short term, a couple of months after I made the video, it did pull back. Uh, however, again, if I liked it at six and a half, I would have loved it at five and a half. So if I was a buyer when I made the video and then I saw the pullback here, which may some of you may have, you would have stepped in and potentially bought some more shares down there at the five and a half level. If you did that again, congratulations. But hey, if you missed it again, overall, even at 810 up here, I still do think it's undervalued. Uh, again, the company's bringing in roughly 400 million a quarter, and the stock right now has a market cap of 365 million. Now, again, I know a little wishy-washy here on the profitability side. However, you just can't deny the business here. You know, 1617 takes a dip down in 2020 like everything else did, sub one and a half, back up to 1.5, back up to almost 1.8. So the company's now bringing in like, you know, 1.6, $1.8 billion a year, and the market cap's $360 million. And also, analysts here have an overall buy on it. We're looking at a price target of roughly $13. So we definitely still have room to grow here, and <clears throat> excuse me, even if the stock doubles, uh, that'll bring it up to 16. You're still looking at a market cap of, you know, 730, 750 million, which technically could still be viewed as undervalued. However, it'd be much, much more realistic. Now that would pump the PE up to north of 24, which may be a little high for the sector. However, again, because the company is actually doing decent business and growing and bringing this revenue in, it's not too crazy to have a 20 plus PE on a stock like this. But overall, you know, I still do like Dusky, but I wanted to show you guys here, if we back out, we look at these trend lines, 
So what we're seeing here is these are the highs going back to looks like the tail end of 2017. And I drew a trend line from the low again, pandemic. And as we see, this is basically forming this triangle, right? This rising triangle. And what's what this is called is an ascending triangle. And in an ascending triangle, technically, is a bullish pattern. So if it stays the course here, as we see, we're closing in on the apex. Looks like it's more towards the tail end of this year, 2023. And technically, if earnings remain strong, it will potentially get to this point, rise up here to the top trend line, which, as we see, is about 1260, 1270, which is analyst price targets. And then it will most likely break out above that top trend line and start to rally into the 15s and the 16s. That's why I'm saying long term from now, I understand if you missed a little bit of a rally from the first time I made the video, you know, maybe you weren't confident in yourself, the company, or maybe you just weren't confident in me, which is fine. I understand it. But as we see here, you know, we basically overall got this call correct. The stock continued to rise over time like we anticipated. But again, I really don't think you miss too much of a party. And if it does reject and pull down again, you can get in here at the low eights and maybe it could pull back here to about the low sevens. But I really do think it's going to stay the course and, and continue in this ascending triangle pattern. Now, we do have earnings coming out next week. And this is going to be key, right? Because in my opinion, if the company kind of like meets or potentially beats I do think it will pop, it will rise, and it will start to rally and stay in this triangle that we're looking at. If for some reason these numbers are horrendous, it could potentially break this bottom trend line and, and just completely break out of this pattern, and then we're going to have to rethink our rink, so to speak, and come back and, and reanalyze the stock. However, again, bringing in... 421 million they're estimating for the quarter and the company right now is worth 365 million so that's why like i don't want to say it's a no-brainer right because anything can happen however i i do think that revenues are going to be decent here this is one year ago same time last year for period ending march as we see here very nice healthy beat on the profitability side and coming in over 13% above estimates, reported 421 off estimates of 372 million. So now estimates 421 million, right? So if they can do the same or a little bit better revenue than they did one year ago, not only will they stay in this bullish pattern, but they will most likely climb potentially back to, let's just say, even the middle of this triangle, which as we see here is about $10 a share. So even getting in here at eight, again, I don't really want to recommend an earnings play because anything can happen. But overall, if the company, again, rallies into earnings and posts a decent quarter here, you can potentially ride this stock from the low eights to the low tens, make yourself a quick 25%. But again, those that's pretty risky if it's an earnings play. I just want to let that be known. Coming over here to stock charts, uh, as we see, where are we? November. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is where we made the video. And as we see, even though it did pull back, it was really fighting and bouncing and staying around this 50 day moving average. Now, it pulled back here at the end of the year. And, and this is where it formed its bottoms. And that's where we see right after the bull dropped, the stock began to rally. The company posted earnings right here and then it gapped up. And we can see now that even though it did pull back here in March and in April, it is now back above that 50 day moving average, which seems to be that that stable point, which last time led to a pretty high rally. That's why I'm saying now with the stock above the 50 day moving average and, you know, trending in this upward channel, it could kind of continue to ride and rally back up into the high eights, at least potentially low nines going into earnings. And that's why I'm saying if earnings are pretty decent, you may have that pop up from the nines to the tens. RSI sitting here at 59 and a half. So it's not overbought yet. MACD slowly rising for us, remaining strong. <clears throat> Excuse me. We come over here to the weekly. We can see the RSI sitting here at 58 and a half. So again, we still do have our potential for the rally. 
you see after the bull dropped here, it got above, it got back above that 200 day moving average. And that's what really propelled it also, in my opinion, to go into like this bullish rally mode, getting back above that 200 day. And then of course, as we see here, even though it did pull back uh, a couple of weeks, you can see it bounced off of this 50 day moving average and has since basically just been climbing upward. And again, you can see this top Bollinger Band here, 911. So again, it may go from 811 to 911 going into earnings. And then if numbers are good, you could see a pop. If numbers are bad, obviously they're going to pull it back down into the sevens and potentially the sixes. But again, overall, the company is looking pretty good, right? So even if you step in now at eight and you turn around like a month later and it's down at like six and a half again, if you have the liquidity, might not be the uh, you know worst idea to uh, think about adding to the position. But you still have this MACD just slowly rising here again. The RSI not overbought yet. Last time it did almost reach that benchmark. We see we had an immediate pullback. However, again, I really do think we can see the rally going into the nines here. We could also potentially check our pivot points. <clears throat> so as we see here on the weekly random ad, our pivot point here in the center is 785, which it has bounced off of and rejected on a few occasions, but now is back above, which again is why we could even potentially come up here and make this double top 957 going into earnings. So you may have, I mean, that's a big rally percentage wise. Uh, it's almost a point and a half here from these levels. But, you know, th this is how I feel a lot of these stocks tend to trade. They'll form the patterns going into the catalyst. The catalyst in this case would be the earnings coming out one week from today, right? So they form the double top. So then you might have a lot of short-term traders jump in buy puts, short the stock because it made the double top and it should go down. However, the earnings are coming out, right? So if the earnings are bad, obviously then the double top makes sense and they should drastically pull the stock down. But, you know, also if the earnings are pretty healthy and come in above estimates, then of course the double top is not really going to be there. And then the stock is going to climb up, uh, you know, into the 980s and the 10s, and it's going to wipe away that double top. So uh, I, I know it sounds crazy and it might not make much sense because I know that, you know, I was in the industry for a couple of years. I may have a little more knowledge and experience than you guys. But, you know, again, I, I, I can't download my I can't upload my mind and have you download it into your mind. However, you know, tr trust me when I tell you, I, I do see this all the time. You know, stocks will like sell off into a channel, into like a falling wedge, which technically is bullish, going right into earnings. And then if the earnings come out good, you had the pattern, you had the earnings, so the stock rallies, it all makes sense. However, I've seen falling wedges and you bet that it's going to go higher. And then the company, even if they like meet earnings, sometimes they'll just break down because it's just not above analyst ex expectations and you know, sometimes there's a lot to take in here, but overall, you know, lo look at the numbers. As we said, the fundamentals of this stock do look pretty healthy. And now again, the technicals, as we see here, even on the daily, the pivot point of 782 that we recently bounced off of a few times. And technically, the next stop should be about 860, 870 here on the daily. We go back to the weekly real quick because I just want to see. Yeah, next stop was up at 11. But I do feel it can get back to this level at least. Where are we here? Up here, yeah. So like eight and a half in the short term. And that's why I'm saying it may come up to 870, which is the uh, next resistance level. But of course, going back to the Bollinger Bands here, uh, 835. So you still have a little bit of room on the daily, but on the weekly, 911. So that's why I, I do think they're going to bring it up to the top of this range here, to the top Bollinger Band rallying it into earnings and then again as we looked at the numbers from one year prior uh march of the previous year see this is period ending march 23 period ending march 22 so again this time one year ago the company had a very nice quarter bringing in 421 million and that's what the estimates are so if this company just stayed the course 
I'm telling you, you, you may see some action here inside of the next couple of weeks with Daski, but overall, I do still feel that the company is undervalued. And even if we double from this level again, we're looking at 740, 750 million market cap. Companies bringing in almost $2 billion a year, and they are net income positive. So there are many reasons on the pro side more than the con side for Dasky. But I'm going to end it there. So I hope this helped a few people out. I know this was a stock that a handful of you were interested in. So again, wanted to hold my feet to the fire. And unlike the rest of the YouTube stock hobbyists out there, actually go back and review the stocks that we talk about, not just consistently pump out videos and uh, be a supermarket of stocks, You're just consistently giving you guys, uh, you know, a thousand symbols to keep an eye on. And uh, r remember again, <clears throat> I just want to warn you guys, when I talk about the Reddit, Wall Street bets and stuff, you know, never a bad idea to find out what other stocks people are looking at, why they like them, where they think they're going to go, right? Whether it's high short interest or a situation like this where just the numbers aren't adding up. So we might have something, you know, severely undervalued here moving forward. I just want you guys to be careful, you know, because Wall Street bets, I feel like it almost turned into, uh, you know, like someone wakes up every day and just sorts a list of all publicly traded companies. And anything that has a high short interest, it's just like, oh, yeah, we're buying these. And it's like, yeah, listen, like that's an interesting strategy. However, you have to remember also these companies probably have a high short interest for a reason, right? Just like Rivian, when, when we look at Rivian, the company like wasn't doing any revenue whatsoever. And, and they listed the company, it went public. The market cap was like 80 billion or something like that. And, and it's like, you know, like that's supposed to go down. Companies that don't bring in any revenue aren't worth 10, 40, 80 billion dollars. They're just not. And that's why I know I got a handful of dislikes on like the Microvision video, MVIS, which I know is another Wall Street bet stock. But hey, listen, uh, you know, I I'm not just going to swim downstream w with the rest of everyone else and just uh, positively re review a company because it was in a forum or because some other YouTuber was talking about it. That, that That's just not how it works. You know, Microvision at the end of the day was undervalued when I reviewed it. Uh, chances are it's probably lower than where it was when I made the video. So, you know, throwing out dislikes on my content is not going to change the fact of, of realistic stocks and stock prices. So, you know, 90% of people viewing a video like Microvision could dislike it. And at the end of the day, the market doesn't care. And of course I really don't care because, um, you know, I'm usually right like 90% of the time. So uh, if something is tremendously overvalued, like Microvision was, it will most likely pull back and do as I say. And also, I know I talked about the Redditors on Wall Street Bets. More importantly, I want you guys to be weary of these other people on YouTube, okay? Because again, a lot of these people, they weren't in the industry. You had Joe Biden come in here. The market's kind of stagnated they became more volatile more unpredictable that there was a uh, you know rate hikes and and inflation numbers were increasing yet they tried to have the market increase and then a lot of people felt that everything was stable so they stepped into the market and then of course they started to sell it off in chunks starting to act like now the bad news is important news and and that's why it's just a little more unpredictable than it was under the uh, previous administration so the average person is probably either in a stagnated portfolio that is remaining flat, not doing much, or they're probably down compared to where they were several years ago. So that's why I just see a lot of quote unquote like YouTube stock hobbyists who are now just making videos, just generally showing you their positions and their portfolio, or they're making these nonsensical list videos, uh, you know, like, oh, three stocks that hit new highs today, or five stocks on my watch list, should I buy any of them? It's like, it's like, what are you asking us for, right? 
It's like I'm an investor, I'm a trader, I'm coming on YouTube to try to get some insight, whether it's education, whether it's a, a stock I should keep an eye on, whether it's something you feel is overvalued or undervalued or is going to have good or bad earnings, whatever it may be, right? You're supposed to give me some insight. You're supposed to give me some direction. Just making a video going down a list, oh yeah, look, AMD is flat, it's up a little bit, Verizon's down today uh, over 2.5%, DraftKings is down over 2.5%, it's like, you're, you're telling me what I already know, you're not bringing anything to the table, so forget about subscribing to these people, actually listening to these people could be very, very dangerous for you, your portfolio, your family, your future, everything. So, again, just be weary of people who are making a YouTube channel and pumping out videos as a hedge to eventually bring in some ad revenue to offset the losses that they're currently taking, as opposed to someone who actually was in the industry, has an idea of what they're talking about. Again, I'm correct, like 80 to 90 percent of the time, I would say, if I make a video or bring something to the table... I usually have high conviction of whether I really like it or it's really overvalued. And I kind of give you guys some sort of direction. So, again, comparing me to some other YouTubers, I'm sure you guys can appreciate what I bring to the table. And again, this How'd I Do Let's Review series, these other channels just pump out these videos of stocks. You never see them go back and say, oh, you know, I, I, I really got this one wrong. It's down 40 percent. You know, I messed up my bad. Right? You, you never hear anyone anymore take accountability. And even though I'm not your advisor and you're not paying me to do this, I'd still go back, hold my feet to the fire, and hold myself accountable for my calls to show you guys, you know, how much better I am than the average bear out there. But I'm going to leave it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comments section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Just like everyone on YouTube says, like the video, thumbs up, helps out the algorithm, helps me get a few more eyes on the channel. Subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me watching the community grow. But more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky and they're volatile and they're uncertain. So I want to wish everyone success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Stay safe. Stay sharp. Stay disciplined. Stay focused. Stay positive. And thanks for stopping by. I'll catch you guys in the next one.